Hi, I'm Magda. Today we're taking a closer look at Norman Lewis's 1960 painting, Alabama. As we can't show the original, these are three different studies which look at different aspects of the painting. The original painting is four feet by six feet, which is huge and can take up an entire gallery wall. These paintings look at how Lewis used gesture in order to depict a narrative and make a really powerful piece only using black and white. Gesture is how you can capture the energy, emotion, and the spirit of a piece just in your line work. So today, we are going to practice gesture in a lot of different ways, but the work that we'll be doing today is not that big, unless you want to make a giant mural piece. You're welcome to, but you don't have to. Gesture looks at how you can epitomize the movement, action, emotion, and spirit of something just in lines or simple shapes. Lewis really encapsulates that in his piece, and I highly encourage you to look up both this piece and many of his other pieces, such as Processional, which balance uh, extreme control with his material with this incredible energy and gives the lines that in his paintings a lot of character and tells an entire story and things which otherwise might be very very simple. I will say gesture drawing is very difficult and something that takes a lot of practice. Even if you were good at gesture drawing a little while ago it takes a while to get back into it. So today we're going to be practicing a lot. To start out sort of getting back into things or just starting out in gesture drawing, I want you to take your sketchbook and think about habits, chores, and things that you do in your daily life. Things that don't necessarily stick out or might not be what you immediately think of when you're trying to make a piece of art. While you're doing these activities throughout your day, maybe making your bed or eating lunch, I want you to draw your hand while you're doing that. So. Just in the middle, pause, look at where your hand is, and draw that. The object of the game is to capture the essence of the motion and the energy in the piece. Welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to go over some basics for drawing hands, and then try gesture drawing outside in the world. So the hand is notoriously difficult to draw. So be really gentle with yourself and patient with yourself and know that your first few hands might not come out how you want them to. But just try, try again and know that with practice, it'll get better. And you might even start enjoying it at some point, but it could be very frustrating at the beginning. One of the easiest ways to understand hands is to know that your hand is kind of this shape, right? A pentagon. So if you go across, there's your knuckles. Here's your thumb, and there's your fingers. So you have this set of knuckles, this set of knuckles, and this set of knuckles. And then you have a knuckle on your thumb and a knuckle right here. So here's a hand right here, and that's valid, and that might be what you're starting out with. Maybe you want to get more into 3D shapes. So let's take the finger for example. So your hand's like this. There's your thumb, and here's your finger. Obviously your finger's more than a line. So the top of your finger is kind of the shape of like the head of a shark. And then we get to the big knuckle right here. And then into the knuckle that attaches your finger to your hand. You can think of your finger as a series of boxes, if that helps you and know that the end is rounded. And if you look at the finger like this, you'll see that the end is rounded and there's your fingernail. There's a big knuckle and then there's a knuckle that attaches it to the rest of your hand. There's many different styles to draw hands and there's some styles that just avoid drawing hands entirely. But I promise that drawing hands is worth it and it's interesting. 
And even if you start off with hands that just look like this, that's beautiful. Just because it doesn't look like how you want it to doesn't mean that it's ugly. So keep drawing that. That can develop into your own style or you can slowly move from this to this and then slowly with practice, you keep going. The most important thing is that you don't give up. And some days you have to take a rest and you get frustrated and that's fine. But the important thing is that you come back the next day and you try it again. Know that art is something that can be really difficult, but it's beautiful and it doesn't have rules. You can make art of whatever you want to and it's your own. So go out and try it and make yourself proud.
Hey, welcome back to the studio. So now we're going to look at lines and how we can use lines in a really expressive way. There's many different ways to create different moods with lines. You can make a line really careful and decorative or really fast. One of the easiest ways to control what your line is describing is through the time that you use to make it. So if you make a very careful line and take a long time to draw it, a lot of times it comes out much lighter. And sometimes if your hands are a little shaky, like mine, which is okay, um, or if you're a little unsure, the line can show that you're a little unsure or that you're nervous or that you're shaky. And that line can feel more delicate or more solemn or something like that. If you make the line really quick, see how both lines have different parts in it that are rounded, but this part is fast, has a lot of energy. While they're both lines, they give us different narratives, different emotions. You can also incorporate roundness in a different way in your lines. Maybe that reminds you of water or the sky. And then you can also bring a bunch of lines together, which is what we call hatching. I like to use hatching for shading or other things like that. And then there's cross hatching. Another way that you can change how your line is perceived and understood is through changing materials. You can use a big Sharpie to get different textures with your line. See how these two lines are similar? But because this Sharpie, the ink is running out, then you can see the texture of the marker, the texture of the ink, which gives you an idea of the energy that was put into that line. Or you can try something like a um, peel and sketch charcoal pencil or a crayon. And that can give you some interesting and different textures. See how this is a much more consistent line. Mm, very nice. <laughs> it's very satisfying. Highly recommend. Or you can get even fancier and get a bamboo brush with some ink to make some lines. Let's see what this looks like, huh? Ooh, now that's a nice line right there, huh? So even though these are just lines, they give you very clear indications of mood and environment what the artist is trying to tell you, which can make your art in general and your sketches much more effective at communication, but also help you make some really interesting abstract work. Because these lines don't rely on narrative or color for that fact. Ooh. 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 I think it's good to find joy in anything you do. People might make fun of you, but that's fine. At least they're having fun. Now take these principles of how you can make lines to show different emotions, speeds, intentions, and narratives to describe what's in the air around you. Maybe it's words or singing or people talking. Maybe it's the sound of the trees and the wind blowing through them. Maybe it's the sound of traffic or maybe it's the sound of the lack of traffic the quietness. Think about what you breathe in and what you breathe out and how that air is moving around you and how you move in it. See how you can take that movement and transmit it into lines. It might be difficult at first, but I'm sure you're going to make some really interesting art. So go out, take a risk, be careful, but make yourself proud. <laughs>